Top 96, the best classic rock. 839, 21 minutes in front of 9 o'clock. 34 degrees right now in the Fairville area. Looking for a high of 48 later on today. Got some special guests in studio on this Friday morning. Folks from the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary. Introduce yourselves, please. Good morning, I'm Neil McMillan. Good morning, I'm John Peterson. How you doing, guys? Very good, Very thank good. you. Thank you. You guys are having a, uh, a benefit breakfast coming up, not this Sunday, but a week from Sunday, the 27th at the Fairville American Legion. And uh, tell folks uh, why you're having this benefit. You guys uh, have never had a benefit before, have you? We have not. Uh, we're going to do a benefit uh, on the 27th so that we can raise funds for our public affairs program. And what, is that? what does that mean, public affairs program? Public affairs. Uh, we, go, we go out into the public and uh, we do a lot of boating safety. We tell the kids about uh, water safety and we make presentations to the, to the public at to various events, churches, uh, into the schools. Uh, we have various methods that we use in order to reach kids with the voting safety message and that's what we're raising funds for so that we can actually fund prizes and the things that we do at the events. Okay. I'm being, you know, a radio DJ, I don't I don't know a lot, but I guess I would, when I hear the Coast Guard I think like you know, California or, or Texas, you know, down down in Florida. I guess I don't equate the US Coast Guard with Minnesota, even though we're the, the land of 10,000 lakes. The Coast Guard Auxiliary was formed in 1939 as a volunteer service to cover the United States inland waters as well as coastal areas. And we are a volunteer service. We are affiliated with the active duty. And we do, as John mentioned, uh, public affairs and public education. And when you think about coastal, well, here in Minnesota, we have the Minnesota, the Mississippi, and the St. Croix Rivers as our areas of responsibility where we do actual on-water patrolling. So we are the, the we are the uh, Coast Guard up here in Minnesota. Wow. So maybe like when they had uh, the flood of, of 97 back up in, in North Dakota, you guys were, correct. were up there. That's correct. correct. We said our, our flotilla sent up a communications <coughs> team that worked with the ELOs okay. and uh, the active duty Coast Guard in the Red River Valley. Uh, setting up communications for rescues during the floods. Sure. Uh, I think this is our third or fourth year of going up there and being deployed up there with the active duty under orders with the Coast Guard. Now, were you gentlemen in other parts of the service before you joined the, the Coast Guard Auxiliary? I was not. John was in the Army. Yeah, I was in the Army 1970 to 73 artillery okay. and uh, stationed uh, both here in Oklahoma and then uh, overseas in Italy. Oh, cool. Well, we years. appreciate your service. That's well, thank awesome. you. Thank you. Your, your event's going to be at the Fairville American Legion next Sunday, the 27th, between 8.30 and 12.30 uh, p.m. Tickets available uh, at the Sweet Spot downtown. You can stop by and pick those up. You're going to be having eggs, sausage, sweet rolls, fruit cup, milk, juice, and also Coasty the Robot. Tell folks about Coasty the Robot. He'll be there for the kids. Coasty, if I had to uh, explain a little bit about Coasty. Coasty's uh, an animated robotic cartoon character if you can imagine uh, a tugboat about four feet high, four feet wide, uh, his appearance, he's mobile, he's got navigation, searchlights, a rotating beacon, siren, ear horn, eyes, eyelids that move. Uh, the fun thing about him is he talks, he plays music, we can actually interact with the kids oh, there you go. and talk to them about being safe on the water. Sure. Uh, we teach kids rules about what to do in case of an emergency on the water and uh, things to say uh, uh, we teach them slogans like don't just pack it wear your life jacket you know we get things across to the kids right. that they then bring home and pass on to mom and dad and cool. the whole goal is to make our boaters safer while they're out and this this uh this benefit will help fund some of that education that you're going to be passing along it, yeah. it will benefit that and then coastie's going to come and visit with the kids during the breakfast as well so we'll have a good time with the kids so we want to make sure they come out and see coastie as well Awesome. So now, what uh, once you've had this benefit, what what will be your next next uh, thing that you do? Next, do uh, you have another more events on the way, or will you just kind of, you know, use these funds to uh, to fund the, the education that we've kind of talked about already? The next two big events that we have, I think, would probably be both boat shows. We have okay. Minneapolis uh, boat show. And the you do that every show. year. We do that every year, and uh, Coastie's there. Uh, we have a lot of presentations that we do. Uh, we sign up folks for the uh, boating safety classes that we teach. 
uh, we're kind of in that mode now that we're we've gone from soft water we're getting into the hard water season sure. what we call the hard water season so we're we're out of our operational season and now getting into more of our teaching season so we're now starting to work with uh, uh, parents and, and uh, kids and teaching them about the new classes that we have once again we're talking with john and neil from the u.s coast guard auxiliary they're here to talk about their uh, their uh, benefit they're having saturday excuse me sunday november 27th at the Fairwell american legion you were talking about uh, the hard water season in the springtime you know i always hear about people bringing their cars out there and not bringing their fish houses back you guys are out in that environment as well when uh, it's dangerous when the water you know ice could be melting and people are you know not supposed to be out there you guys are also kind of involved in that as well we normally don't get on the water until the water temperatures are in the 60s. Okay. We uh, tend to let the local public safety and law enforcement and DNR folks uh, do their thing because uh, we aren't, we don't have any law enforcement authority as volunteers, but we do, as far as auxiliarists, uh, get on the water in the summertime when the weather is nicer and, of course, there's many more boaters out there where we can help educate them and uh, make it safer for their experience on the water. Cool. So who, if there is a, a situation where you are to be uh, brought into, who makes that Who makes that decision? Who's the one that calls the, the Coast Guard to get uh, you guys out to work on a situation like the flood in 97? The, the governor or? Well, when we're, when we're on patrol, we are under orders from the Coast Guard, from the active okay. duty. So when we go out on a normal patrol, we'll be on, we'll say the Mississippi River mm -hmm. patrolling. Uh, we may hear a, a rescue call come over channel 16, a distress call. Uh, we can respond to that call, uh, but we will call in and get permission from our sector, which is sector up in Mississippi River, uh, which is the active duty coasting Coast Guard station. We'll get permission from them and we'll coordinate any search and rescue or any assistance that we may give to the public will will be coordinated through the active duty. Okay. Tell us, tell us something about the Coast Guard that we might not know. Something that uh, might surprise people. Well, the 8th District, which we're a part of, is headquartered out of uh, Memphis. That's the, uh, the, that's the sector lower office, if you will. Mm -hmm. The sector upper office is located in St. Louis. And the 8th District headquarters is in New Orleans. And the 8th Coast Guard Western Rivers area, which we are a part of, covers 16 states wow. from the Canadian border all the way down to Louisiana. So pretty much the entire flowage of the Missouri, the Mississippi, the Minnesota River is, is contained in the 8th District. So we have approximately uh, 1,500 auxiliarists in the 8th District and we're responsible for quite a, quite a few uh, quite a few boaters in that area. Right, and we're in the local, we're in the, the uh, local flotilla, which would be the, the, the grassroots, if you want to call it. Uh, and uh, we have 67 flotillas and four detachments within our 12 divisions in our area. So we, we are, we do carry a, a lot of weight in, in this area, in our area of responsibility. So now, is this, is this kind of like a volunteer fire department kind of thing where you're called upon when an emergency arises or you guys are very well dressed, have medals and uh, look very respectable this morning? Are you, do you do something every day involving the Coast Guard? Well, what, or, or as, uh, volu as volunteers, we, we undergo a pretty extensive training program, both classroom and on the water. And we do receive qualifications, which both uh, John and myself are wearing some of the ribbons and devices that uh, are similar, similarly uh, awarded to the active duty members. But we go through the training and it's, uh, it's really a rewarding experience sure. for us because it's, it's volunteer, uh, there is no pay. We do get uh, reimbursed for um, our time if we are under orders mm -hmm. and for patrolling time on the waters we are, we we're reimbursed for fuel expenses. Otherwise, um, be rewarded by your efforts and helping the general public. Our slogan is America's Volunteer Guardians, and we feel that we are protecting the waterways with the active duty. Sure. So do, do, do you feel that uh, people are 
more aware of water safety these days or are things n people need to be more informed about water safety? You hear about these boating accidents where people are, have been drinking and whatnot and of course they get all the attention but I guess I'm wondering are those incidents up or are people getting the education that they really need to you know, be careful where the life vest is? Well stuff? I think people are more, they're more aware uh, since Neil and I we've been in about seven years and when we first started in as vessel examiners there seemed to be resistance when we would go out on the water and and uh, volunteer. We offer free vessel safety checks for anyone that would like to have us look at their, their boat, make sure that they have all the federal and state required items on their boat. There used to be some resistance to that and uh, I think over the years what we've seen now is we see people coming to us saying, can we get a free vessel safety check? Cool. We really want to have that done. Um, you know, How long does that take if somebody wanted to approach you for that? Is that half hour, hour? A small vessel, uh, a fishing vessel, probably uh, 20 minutes okay. maybe. Uh, uh, what I like to do is get the kids involved. They actually go around with me while we're doing the inspection so they get an idea of oh, what, what we're looking one. at, sure. what they're looking at on the boat also. We talk to mom and dad about how to be safe on the water while we're doing that. So we, d we get to do a little bit of education with the kids while we're out there doing cool. it as well. What happens if somebody calls you up and wants that inspection and they don't pass? We don't, we don't have any enforcement, but what okay. we do is we offer uh, an inspection sheet that we give them a copy of. Oh, okay. If they don't pass the safety exam, uh, they'll have a copy of that. And what we offer them is to go in and take care of those deficiencies and then give us a call back. We'll put our number right on there and our examiner number, and uh, we'll just ask them to call us back. We'll come out again, okay. meet them back at the boat launch, wherever it is that they boat frequently, and we'll re-inspect them again. Uh, once they pass the exam, then we'll issue a vessel safety uh, check sticker that goes on their vessel okay. so that they can show that they've had the inspection. Sure. Once again, we're talking with uh, John and Neil from the U.S. Coast Guard. They're having uh, a benefit this coming su next Sunday, the 27th, at the Federal American Legion between 8.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. Get tickets at uh, Sweet Spot Candy. Or they can call 507-210-6544. And how much are the tickets? Seven dollars for adults and three fifty at the door for the kids. Okay, and that's standard. It's not going to be less expensive until the day of the event and more. It's always that's a straight price, right? Straight price. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking back over your seven years, uh, somebody said, "What was the most exciting thing that happened when you were doing one of your uh, your tours with the Coast Guard Auxiliary? What would you uh, What would you think of?" Mine would be uh, my boat crew qualification day, which was October. No, it was um, August twenty sixth okay. of oh eight. And uh, we were we were doing a side by side tow on the St. Croix River, while we were while we were towing another vessel. As far as my qualification, mm -hmm. we heard a uh, distress call on Channel 16, boater in the water, uh, runaway boat, and we looked up river about a quarter of a mile and saw a boat doing the circle of death uh -oh. around a boater in the water. Wow. So we immediately broke off that tow and went up and were involved in the search and recovery. Uh, to help that victim. Sure. We actually brought her on board and treated her for injuries and got her to the local uh, boat ramp where the you. ambulance wow. treated her. So, I mean, that was pretty memorable for, sure, I bet. <laughs> for my first Absolutely. Time. How about you, sir? Well, I happened to be on that vessel. We were on John's boat, and I was the coxswain on that vessel. So uh, I was, if you will, in command of that, along with another boat that we were working with. Two auxiliary boats together, and we heard the heard the uh, the plea on the radio for the Coast Guard, and it was it was exciting. It was very rewarding, and the uh, the victim uh, had a broken leg, two gashes from the boat propeller on on one leg, and she was hospitalized. Her husband called a couple of our members, and he was very very thankful. Sure, and. Uh, we were we were it we were in the area we just happened to be there and the response all the training that we go through it all paid off wow good for you so. <laughs> serendipitous i mean everything happens for a reason they say it's so exactly. good yeah. for you so is there anything else you'd like to add about the benefit or about uh, what the funds will be used for well on on the 27th along with coasty we will be advertising a public education voting class Okay. And I think that's one of the reasons why we have seen over the years the 
decline in voting deaths because people are taking advantage of the voting classes that are offered to the public. They're very inexpensive. In some cases, they're free. Uh, there's online examinations. Uh, 